so we were talking about this reading uh, uh, demographic changes in India as the country prepared for the challenge, right? By K. S. James and Shrinivas Goli, and we have talked about few challenges which were there before Indian economy. Now we'll talk about three other challenges which authors have talked about. One, they said this: the good thing is that fertility is declining in the country. Good thing is that the life expectancy is increasing in the country. But the bad thing is that although fertility is declining and life expectancy is increasing, there are many chances of uh, bad health. May there are many chances of uh, uh, chronic illnesses, uh, disabilities. So whatever in just living is not enough. Living a healthy life is important. Right. So the, the, the problem is that uh, if you look at the overall life expectancy, it is around 67 years. But if you're going to adjust the life expectancy because of the disabilities, this is going to come down to 53 years. Uh, so we also have to take care of our aging population that they do not get into disabilities, no chronic illnesses. We have to provide the better health services to the entire population. That is the point which they are making, right? So let's write a uh, few points. First one. Yeah. Although Life expectancy is improving. These improvements remain marked by frequent chronic illnesses illnesses and disabilities. In people's later years, right? So here you can give an example uh, which they give uh, in their reading, that if you look at the overall life expectancy, that is around 67 years. But uh, uh, if you adjust for disability, then life expectancy in, the, in India is only 53 years, right? Then they also say this, that if you look at the 2000, 2011 census, you'll find this, that uh, urban population is constituting around 31.16% of the total population. But then they also say this, that across the country, across the different states, the rate of urbanization is also differing a lot. So there are uh, huge interstate disparities in urbanization. Uh, and uh, there is the interstate migration for the better livelihoods. Mm -hmm to the urban centers. So people, they move from the rural areas to the urban areas in search for the better economic opportunities, which they do, right? So they say this, that we know that cities are, uh, are the places where people think that, and that's true also that uh, uh, growth is happening. They are the centers of economic growth and where people can have better opportunities. Uh, but at the same time, the rural areas are those areas which are suffering from economic distress. Uh, and uh, so we need to have the urbanization 
we need to have the kind of an economic growth which is going to be with proper planning which is going to have lesser interstate inequalities in urbanization and even among the rural areas they should also be given the proper infrastructure right it's not that everyone has to move from rural areas to the urban areas in search for the better employment opportunities why can't they get it in the rural areas themselves that's one thing uh, so that is there so there are huge interstate disparities in urbanization, right? And because there are huge interstate disparities in urbanization, it is leading to economic inequalities across the states, one. Second, the rural areas are suffering. from economic distress due to poor planning lack of adequate state support right so there are widening even intercity disparities so there is few cities in the states they are emerging a lot and so only those pockets of the state they are they are getting better and the entire state is not doing well this should not have happened the entire state and then all states together, they should move together forward. There should be a proper planning of the uh, development for the rural as well as the urban areas. Uh, it should not be that the growth is happening in only in certain pockets of the state, in certain pockets of the nation. Uh, so you just look at Delhi and Noida in case if they are developed, Mumbai is developed. You can't say that the country is developed. What about the inner regions of Jharkhand? What about the inner regions of Maharashtra, inner regions of Rajasthan? Every state should develop. And even within these states, for example, maybe only Jaipur is uh, developed. What about the other areas? So the thing is that there should be a proper planning in which the urban centers as well as the rural areas should be developed. Then, then they say that this is a very good point. There are, there are persisting gender disparities. So you look at the education, you look at health, you look at economic status everywhere. Girl child is getting lesser as compared to the male child. So if given a choice, families would want to invest more in the male child than in the girl child. Given... Um, uh, male child is given proper health support also, but may not be girl child. Uh, this is in general, this is true, right? I'm not talking about any specifics. And all of this and the overall sex ratio also, this is turning against India. You have gender disparities. You have the overall sex ratio, which is posing a huge threat to the development. That is what they are saying. Uh, so, and they say, um, they say this, that there are studies which say that if you can reduce these gender disparities, you know what, you can increase your GDP yes, by, you can, you 
in case if you can reduce these gender disparities, then you can actually increase the GDP by $2.5 trillion by 2025. That is what they are trying to say. So it is in the interest of the country to reduce gender disparities. That is what they are trying to say. Uh, so please write. You will have to uh, write more points on the reading as well. Persisting gender disparities. In education. Health. Economic status, marriage, and overall sex ratio. was a huge threat to India's economic prospects. And then they can you can give that line which they have written that there are studies which show that if you can achieve the gender parities, if you can reduce these gender disparities, then you can actually increase the GDP of the country by $2.5 trillion. Uh, Something like that uh, in uh, by by 2025. And then they say that uh, there is the problem of uh, this guy, uh, child marriage in the country. So child marriages are also persistent in the country. If child marriages are persistent, then what happens is that uh, uh, they contribute to the very unskilled and the unhealthy labor force. They're unskilled. So they have got the responsibilities of the family very early on. They're not able to increase their skill before they are getting married. So in their youth only, while even they should be educated or they should be getting education, they have started working. So their skills have hardly increased. So they pose, because this is an unhealthy uh, this is this is resulting in the unhealthy and the unskilled labor force. So this is creating a threat uh, on the health as well as economic front. That is what they are trying to say. Uh, so please write the other point related to this is child marriages. Contribute to unskilled and unhealthy labor. And pose even a greater health problem. which is negatively affecting the economy. Right. 
<clears throat> so achieving gender parity is very important in case if we want to reduce our economic threat, our economic distress. Um, and this will also improve the overall standard of living in the country. And so these are the few challenges uh, which they have talked about, uh, which they have talked about. And they concluded by saying this, that uh, uh, India in, in India, you have uh, the rapid aging, which is happening. Uh, so India is getting older. And, and it will get older very soon. I mean, when you say older, it means when the dependency ratio actually increases or the oh, elderly dependency ratio is going to increase a lot. Uh, so this is going to uh, affect the quality of life later, in the later years. So we need to be prepared right now. We have to invest in the health and the skills and the education of the labor force. We have to reduce the health inequalities. We have to reduce the economic inequalities uh, so that these challenges, they could be taken up. So in case if we look at these challenges and we can do something about them, then we will be prepared for the demographic change because um, nobody can deny this, that uh, the society is going to get older. Uh, that is, there will be more people who will be elderly and less people who will be in the working age. So are we prepared for that challenge? So there is a huge population burden which is there. So how do we tackle that? Those things are to be taken care of. So this, according to authors, if we, if we, if we are prepared for these challenges, we'll be able to uh, tackle the demographic change easily, right? So this is what I wanted to do in this reading beta. So we'll start with a new reading in the next class. Thank you.